good morning students dear student in the previous class we had discussed about of the ratio and proportion and we also solved the exercise 10a and 10b which is related to the ratio and proportion so you will send the solution of exercise 10a and 10b on the my whatsapp now in this class we will discuss about of the new method that is the unitary method unitary method in which unitary method so what is the unitary method the method in which first we find the value of one unit the method So to find out the value of one unit to get to get more we multiply second to get less we divide first we find the value of one unit in this method first we will keep it in mind then we solve the unit method in this method first we find the value of one unit to simple the rule use method of to get more we multiply to get less we divide okay so now we come on the exercise 10c in the exercise 10c By the unitary method. In the question number one, if the cost of forty meter of cloth is rupees eighty thousand one thousand eight hundred ninety, cost of forty meter cloth. Find the cost of six meter cloth. Here, cost the cost of forty meter cloth is equal to rupees one thousand eight hundred ninety. To find out the unit, first we find the the unit value of the unit value of the one one. What is the value of one? So, cost of one meter cloth. Here, one meter. It will be less because the forty meter cloth is this. Then the cost of the one meter that will be less. So we will divide. That is one eight nine zero upon forty. Now, show the cost of. Six meter cloth. That is, we will multiply six into one eight nine zero upon forty. Now two three the six two seven the forty. This is it. 
In the question number two, here the cost of one dozen or dozen soap, that is cost of 12 soap is given that and what is the cost of 15 such soap. You will solve that. Question number three, that is also same, you will solve that. Four, that is same. Let us solve the same question. Now we solve the question number four. In the question number four, two, three, we solve that. Take two twenty-two point five meter of any four iron rod base. Weight of twenty-two point five meter iron rod. Weight of 22.5 meter iron rod is equal to 85.5 so weight of 1 meter rod that is 85.5 upon 20 so, we have 5 meter rod that is 5 into 85.5 upon 22.5. Here the decimal places are the same. So, we will remove the decimal. In this case, the decimal places are same. If we remove the decimal, that is equal to 5 into 855 upon 225. That decimal place are one place on the above, one place on the below. So we remove the decimal. We multiply with 10 in the both numerator and denominator. Now we simplify.
क्वेश्चन नंबर एट द क्वेश्चन नंबर एट फोर पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम एलाइल ऑफ कॉपर एंड जेल कंटेन थ्री पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम ऑफ कॉपर वाट वेट ऑफ कॉपर विल बेट इन एटीन पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम ऑफ एलाइल इन फोर पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम एलाइल तो इन फोर पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम एलाइल The weight of copper is weight of copper is three point five gram. In four point five gram alloy of zinc and copper, there are three point five gram copper. So in So, in one gram alloy, the weight of copper that is three point five gram upon four point five gram. So. What weight of the copper will there be? Eighteen point nine gram of copper. So in eighteen point nine gram alloy, the weight of that is eighteen point nine into three point five upon four point five. What is the total decimal places on the denominator? There is total decimal places in the denominator that is two, and decimal places in the numerator that is hundred. So we multiply the hundred, eighteen point nine into three point five multiply by hundred upon four point five multiply by hundred. That is eighteen point nine into thirty five. So not point thirty five. One four five zero. Okay, it's clear. So we come. We multiply by hundred in both numerator and denominator. Now we will cancel that five times the thirty five, five times the forty five, nine times the ninety, nine twenty times the. Now we multiply seven times the seven, seven. Upon ten, that is forty point seven gram. So there are forty point seven gram of copper in eighteen point nine. Okay. Note it.
come on the next question, that is question number 9. So, for rupees one, we can buy thirty five upon eighty seven point five liters. So, for rupees. That is question number 10 and 11, which is also same as the question number 9. In this question, you will start from the rupees and the find, which is the unknown, you will write the last, the given, which is write the first. Which is given, there are the rupees, in both the rupees are given, we want to find the number of letters, so we will write the letter in the last. In the question number 10, 11, you can also solve that in the same, same method. So you know that the question number 9 
okay now 10 and 11 you will solve that now we come on the question number 12 The question number twelve: A car travel one ninety five km in three hours. In three hours. So, how long will it take to travel five hundred twenty? Travel will be travel in seven hours. Okay. Then okay. in the first part, there is a time. Question is time. Here is the distance. Distance. What is the question? There is a time. What is asking? Time. How long? How long? How many time? How much time will it take to travel by train to India? Now the time is there. So for the first part, for the first, we start from the one ninety five to travel one ninety five km. Car take. Three hours. So to travel one km, car take three upon one ninety five hours. So to travel five hundred twenty km. The car will take five hundred twenty into three upon one ninety five. That is that is eight hours. Okay. So to travel five hundred twenty kilometers, it will take that eight hours. Now the second part. Second part. What is it? Which is the unknown? That is distance. So this line we will write start from the here. So we will write in three hours. Car travel one ninety five kilometer. So in one hour that is one ninety five upon three. So in how many hours? Seven hours. That is seven into one ninety five upon three. Good. So from this clear question, it is clear that which is unknown we start from there. We start from there, and which is unknown we will write the after. First we write the which is given, and after we write the which is unknown. Okay? So you will solve the question number thirteen and fourteen as well as same method. Thirteen and fourteen, you saw. Right now, fifteen. For in the fifteen. 
pen. So for 6,000 pens, required box, box that is 48, required box is 48. So for one pen, required box that is 48 upon 6,000. So for 1875, that is 1875 into 48 upon 6000, Fifteen boxes. So there are fifteen boxes required for the one thousand eight hundred seventy five pens. Okay, now we solve one more question that is question number 24, 25, 20, 16, 17, 18, 19. In which one question we will solve, the rest of the question we will solve that. Now we take the question number 16. 20 workers can build a wall in 15 days. 4 workers can build a wall in 15 days. That is 15 days. Show. One worker can build the wall in 15 into 24. Here you see that so when the man is less, the work will be the work time will be more. So we will multiply. So nine workers can build the wall. That is 15 into 24 upon nine. Here the time will be less. So in the all question of the 17, 18, 19, you will solve that by this method, you will multiply it. Here you will multiply this because it is the inverse proportion. It is the inverse. In the inverse proportion, when one is increased, another will decrease. Here the worker is 24, then day is 50, the worker will 9. That is number of workers is decrease. So number of days will be decrease. So it is the inverse proportion. You will solve it. So student, today we have completed the exercise 10C. So your homework, complete the exercise. We will solve the exercise 10 C and the solution of the exercise 10 C will be sent on my WhatsApp group in the form of PDF or image. Okay? Okay, thank you. Good day.